Welcome to Good Morning Nigeria, Mr. President. Good morning. President, your official visit to the U.S. has generally been described as a huge, huge success. Now, in terms of commitments, what have we gained as a nation? And what commitments were you required to make? Um, the visit to the United States is significant in the sense that um, it's virtually the continuation of uh, my contact with uh, President Obama uh, when I was invited to G7 to brief them about the security in Nigeria. Um, I was and still am very impressed with the concern the United States and Europe showed about the situation in Nigeria. And uh, if you can recall, we base our campaign, when I say we, I mean the APC, on three uh, basic issues in this country. Firstly, security. Secondly, unemployment, especially of the youth, which means the economy. And thirdly, corruption. Uh, these uh, three fundamental issues uh, is what uh, uh, I try to explain to G7 and on the invitation by President Obama, I went there, and this is what I discussed with the President of the United States, the Vice President, the Secretary of State, and other organizations and NGOs in the United States. All right, Mr. President, you've already indicated the uh, areas in which you engaged American officials. But let's look at security, for instance. You did indicate that intelligence and capacity building were two of the issues in which you sought help from the Americans. Now, what specific comments, Mr. President, did the Americans make with regard to uh, these matters? And secondly, you have also touched on uh, the role of the G7. Uh, are the other international partners in the fight against Boko Haram still with us, uh, following, of course, from what you have discussed with the American officials? Well, if you can recall, there is a meeting of Lake Chad Basin Commission, consisting of uh, uh, Cameroons, Chad, Nigeria, Niger, and uh, Benin Republic. Um, we, decided we decided to have a multinational multi joint task force. Joint task force. Uh, and then each country then each uh, to dedicate a number of troops number to be placed uh, in different parts of uh, different parts of the Lake Child Basin Commission, and that should be done by the end of this month. Um, there are logistic problems. We discuss the logistic problems. We discuss the problem of equipping the troops there. We discuss about intelligence gathering. We discuss about the uh, air support. Uh, and you, you all very well know that Nigeria is the main battleground. Uh, for that reason, Nigeria has to bear uh, the large cost of, of this operation. And um, I have a comprehensive uh, uh, report on what the Boko Haram was able to do when they occupied more than 10 local governments in Borno State, some local governments in Yobe and Adamawa State. The destruction they made on the infrastructure, especially schools, hospitals, roads, blown up bridges, blown up markets. Uh, so we have uh, made uh, a list of this and what it will cost to quickly rehabilitate it. Again, the IDPs, internally displaced persons, there are more than 1.5 million, spread over mostly uh, the rural city states of Borno, Yobe, Adama, but they are in Kaduna, they are here in Abuja. Uh, what it will take to rehabilitate them in terms of uh, repairing of the towns that have been raised down to the ground, like Baga, like Bama, and other, and other towns, and then getting the infrastructure, schools, hospitals, and then maybe getting the teachers that survived and equipping them. It's, it's, a, it's a very expensive and a long list, but uh, 
is, 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 is verifiable and quantifiable. One point that we also need to pursue has to do with equipment, to which you have also spoken. Nigeria, of course, faced some embarrassment some months ago uh, when the country tried to shop for arms and supermarkets, as it were, going to South Africa and our funds were withheld. I'm wondering, Mr. President, whether the Americans are now willing uh, to sell some critical equipment to us. The Americans are willing to help us. They understand our problem. They sympathize with us. This, I think, uh, you ought to know. Uh, from the time the Secretary of State was sent here, before the election, he saw the former president. He saw chairman of INAC. He saw the then opposition. And America stand with that they are not going to accept anything done in Nigeria outside the Constitution of Nigeria. And outside that means the Electoral Act. Now you know the moves made to frustrate the last election, including uh, threatening INEC by telling them that uh, their security cannot be guaranteed. And they asked for at least six weeks uh, extension of the time of the election. Mercifully, those six weeks are within uh, the time uh, for, for the election. And then reluctantly, the opposition conceded. And the rest, as they said, is history. So really, the Americans uh, have shown concern. Uh, they spoke to the former president, INAC, opposition, and maintained the pressure throughout. This, they are uh, in the same uh, agreement with, with Europe. Uh, and I think Nigerians tend to be grateful to United States and, and Europe for making sure that uh, uh, Nigerian elections are conducted according to the law. Right, uh, Mr. President, thank you for your response. Still on the matter of security, uh, while in the U.S., you uh, responded to the question about the uh, Chibo girls, and you did say, of course, the intention of uh, the Nigerian government to ensure that the children are returned safe and alive. And uh, you talked about um, the reason, of course, for the relocation of uh, the command uh, control center. You know, how, uh, the US, how is the U.S. willing to assist in this area? Yes. Well, as I said, uh, because of high technology the United States has, uh, and of course the, uh, the European countries uh, and China, um, and uh, lack of uh, capacity in that field, a lack of an effective air force, not that we don't have the trained personnel, not that we don't have um, the basic infrastructure for its maintenance, but the problem is that um, uh, in spite of the money alleged to have been spent on um, the operations, uh, uh, the Air Force is, is virtually non-existent. Um, the fixed-wing uh, aircrafts uh, are not very serviceable. The few that will remain, uh, the helicopters, again, uh, are not serviceable, and there are too few. And this is an operation virtually in an open country, other than the Sambisa forest. So there is a need for Air Force uh, to conduct the reconnaissance and support the ground troops. The arrangements made by the former government will soon expire. Uh, we have made this clear. Uh, to the Americans, we made this clear to, to G7, and uh, we need their cooperation. Now, this problem is not only the Northeast. We have a problem of the Gulf of Guinea, which you know it is between Senegal and Angola, and the incredible theft of Nigerian crude, uh, uh, of the average of more than 250,000 barrels a day. Uh, which has been illegally uh, loaded from our terminals uh, by unpatriotic uh, Nigerians uh, that they only 
consider their own self-interest uh, uh, to, to get money. So we register uh, the support and cooperation of the United States and uh, other countries that sympathize with us uh, to make sure the Gulf of Guinea is secure. So that those troops or those uh, uh, crude thieves uh, will make it difficult for them to load at our terminals or at mid sea and transport it to all over the world and, uh, and sell it. All right, Mr. President, thank you. Now you have been unwavering in your determination to fight corruption. And during the election uh, period, it was top of uh, your party's uh, manifesto. And in the U.S., to use your words, Mr. President, mind-boggling underhand dealings in the oil sector. How exactly do you intend to prosecute this war against corruption? The multi-party democratic system for developing countries has its advantages and uh, relative disadvantages in the sense that um, uh, for us to get the help of the developed countries, we have to get uh, our facts, documents, uh, complete uh, investigation, reliable ones, take them to court and get people prosecuted. Meanwhile, the theft continues. Up to the 10th of this month, uh, crude is being illegally lifted by people who are in government. Uh, we are trying to get these uh, documents. We are getting cooperation of the international community. Uh, we are going very soon uh, uh, to make sure that those who perpetrated this act against Nigeria uh, will be faced with facts and be taken to our courts. And we, are co we got the cooperation of some of the countries, uh, the destination of our crude, and we are discussing with them. Uh, we have to maintain high confidentiality so that um, uh, we don't um, uh, risk uh, some of the loyal Nigerians that are helping us to trace the destination of this stolen crude. And then the accounts where it is, uh, was being paid instead of the federal government account. Uh, I don't uh, think the NNPC knows how many accounts uh, there are outside there uh, which uh, payments are being made of, of Nigerian crew, which is not, uh, uh, which is really an outright theft. Uh, the monumental theft. Uh, that uh, had been going on for a number of years, uh, a lot of Nigerians cannot comprehend. Mr. Mr. President, well, thank you for uh, your response. Just to follow up on uh, the issue of uh, tracing uh, Nigeria's looted patrimony, in other words, receipts from crude oil sales that ordinarily should be in our national coffers. I'm wondering, Mr. President, yes, you have raised this matter uh, with the U.S. President and a number of other friendly countries, but the experience often has been that the global financial system uh, is often hesitant to let go of uh, funds that they have received from illegal sources, usually around the world. Uh, we know of a number of countries, for instance, that have banking systems where there are no disclosures made. Are you hopeful that this time around, uh, President Obama, that's to say the U.S., and let us add also the G7, are willing uh, to ensure that uh, the monies, some estimates of about 150 billion U.S. dollars, get back into Nigeria's national coffers? Yes, I think I said it, they, they are willing, but I also told you that um, it has to... Uh, comply with their own system uh, that we have to get the documents, especially the shipping documents, uh, how they load here our, at our terminals, the destinations, and some of them change in, in the high seas, they change uh, the crew and, and change the, uh, the destinations, uh, and then uh, trace the accounts uh, that. Uh, uh, the lifting were paid instead of the federal government account, they are paid into individual accounts. So uh, the cooperation we need is that once we got those uh, shipping documents and we are lucky to trace them up to the uh, countries 
where they sold the, the crude and in which account it goes, then we submit the, uh, the evidence in terms of loading, in terms of uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the payments made in accounts other than the federal government account. Once we do that, they are very, very willing to make sure that um, uh, those accounts uh, are frozen and the money uh, uh, repatriated to Nigeria. Uh, it's not uh, an easy process, but I assure you that we are working very hard. We cannot say we will wait until everything is intact before we let you know. Whatever we are, are able to get uh, in the following uh, months or a couple of months, oh. then we will bring it out uh, for Nigerians to know with the facts in our hands and the prosecution started for those who perpetrated this unpatriotic uh, uh, action against Nigeria for so many years. Mr. President, I'm, I'm saying that uh, we have read quite a number of stories in our dailies about how you intend to deal with the NNPC. Uh, we would like you to confirm if it is true that you plan to break up the organization. And secondly, the question about uh, the recurring problem of fuel scarcity. Uh, how does Mr. President intend to deal with that situation? Well, firstly, um, I read the stories too that uh, I intend to break the NNPC. Um, <clears throat> I think the best way to go about it is uh, firstly uh, to establish the fact of the magnitude of the inefficient way the NNPC conducted itself. When we do that, uh, we'll be on a higher moral ground to do uh, whatever recommendations I think uh, some specialists will make to us. Um, uh, secondly, uh, you are question about the problem of scarcity. Now, this is one of the major problems. Um, as you all know, uh, we used to have four refineries, uh, refining on a daily basis uh, an average of about 450,000 barrels a day. Uh, that infrastructure with more than 25 depths, uh, depots all over the country from Maiduguri to Ilorin, uh, from Gusau, uh, to Yola, to Makadi, to Fort Harcourt, to Ibadan. Uh, all that infrastructure has virtually been vandalized. And Nigerians uh, were forced to buy uh, products uh, as a world market, uh, as if Nigeria hasn't invested in the industry. This is sheer corruption uh, and inefficiency. And uh, this destruction cannot be undone overnight. Firstly, we have to organize uh, with our partners, those who have been uh, prospecting and developing uh, the petroleum sector uh, for more than a generation. They have refineries all over the world. Uh, the, the swapping which is uh, uh, turned into a major killing uh, ground uh, for corrupt uh, officials. Uh, we can ask these people to lift the coup, work out uh, how much is, they can bring back to us and we pay for the transportation uh, and for the refining, uh, part of it was the, some of the problems that we don't need. There is no point to give some people uh, licenses to go to wild market and buy products and bring to Nigeria. And even the swapping is done in such a dishonest way that Nigeria was consistently losing on a daily basis millions of dollars. Uh, I think um, the people who have been operating on the industry, a lot of them that took the decision, um, uh, they display such a lack of conscience and patriotism. And uh, um, only God knows the amount of damage meted on Nigeria.
Well, let's move on now to another point uh, that came up in the course of your recent visit to the United States. You were reported as uh, said, Mr. President, that Nigerians should not expect ministers any time before September. That is this year. The question that arises is what factors are uppermost in your mind when seeking to appoint persons into positions of public trust? Well, from what I saw so far, we need uh, real patriotic Nigerians, Nigerians that uh, can work very hard, uh, knowledgeable, experienced, committed Nigerians uh, to be in charge of ministries. A lot of the institutions of Nigeria, important institutions, and those that uh, many of those institutions have been well compromised. Everybody was for himself and God for all of us. It's most unfortunate. We have the people, they are educated people, experienced people, but everybody seems to be working for himself. How much he could get as, as much and as soon as possible. Um, we have to look for technocrats and we have to look for uh, politicians and we have to look for uh, certainly uh, decent people in this class uh, to give them the responsibility of uh, being in charge of ministries and the important for us turtles. Um, we will try as much as possible to avoid appointing hostages. By this I mean people who have been in the system but compromise their personal and professional integrity. Um, it's taken so much time because um, a number of uh, uh, knowledgeable people have been compromised. People who, who, would, who would have like to depend on them to manage our economy, to manage our security. A lot of them have been compromised. So the last thing I think uh, we will have is to get a compromised person to be in charge of an institution. There's no way he could be efficient. There's no way he could be patriotic. Somebody behind the scene uh, will be telling him at the expense of the nation. And this is what we are trying to avoid. And I assure you that so much damage has been done to Nigeria that we cannot rush, you know, to give these uh, responsibilities uh, to people that uh, have unfortunately been compromised. Because there is no way you can effectively supervise, say, 20 ministries. You have to give it to people you trust and you allow them to perform according to the uh, constitution of the country. Now, if you trust the wrong people, then you will be back to square one, and Nigeria will be the loser. Right, Mr. President, l let me take you on to another matter for which Nigerians have expressed great concern, and that's the current standoff in the National uh, Assembly, which has ensured that not much has been accomplished since the Eighth uh, National Assembly you know, was inaugurated. And I'm sure also that Mr. President is also concerned. Now, is this hindering your work? Are you intervening or will Mr. President intervene? Well, um, I have to be very sensitive uh, to the constitution of the country. I do not like to be caught by anybody, especially the uh, legislature, that um, I'm interfering with them. They are the third arm of government. Uh, we have the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. And uh, over the years, at least over the last 16 years, they have developed uh, the system of choosing their leaders. There's no way I can directly interfere. All I can do through the party is to appeal to their conscience that um, what I already observed uh, we should go over it as soon as possible. When I say we, I mean the APC. We cannot win the battle and lose the war. We must not allow individual personal ambition to succeed in 
dividing us and allowing PDP to deal with us piecemeal. And this is what the National Assembly has allowed so far, the Senate and the House. This is what they are trying to allow the APC, the PDP, to take over the government again. This is extremely disturbing. I am very, very worried. How can the APC mobilize itself and cause 70% attrition in the National Assembly? 70% of the members did not come back. And just to present it to them on a flutter of gold. The only thing I can do is to apply, is to appeal to the questions of APC members of the Senate and the House of Representatives. It took us time to get to where we are. I don't want personal ambition to scuttle our success and therefore fail to deliver on our promises to the nation. Yeah, well, uh, Mr. President, again, we'd like to thank you for your response to that question. In two days' time, it will be exactly two months uh, since you were sworn in as President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, and about 30 years uh, after you first left office in 1985. Now, how does the reality of your current office compare with your expectations? And in particular, what would you say has been the greatest challenge so far this past two months? The greatest challenge, unfortunately, is uh, what we foresaw in the APC and what we campaigned on, the three issues I referred earlier. The insecurity, uh, the lack of employment, especially of youth. There's a reliable data that more than 60% of Nigerian population are youth. And most of them, whether they have been school or not, are unemployed. This is a big keg of gunpowder the nation is sitting on. And the economy is virtually in tatters because of corruption and inefficiency. And of course, the vicious circle of insecurity, unemployment and corruption has to be broken. Otherwise, they will break this country. So through this medium, I'm appealing to Nigerians at all levels to be very, very conscientious of the situation we are in. Let us put our hands together and save this country. We will have to fight corruption to survive as a nation. Because we have to get the infrastructure led by power. But the first thing, you have to secure the country before you can efficiently manage it. Without security, nothing will work. And we are asking for the cooperation of Nigerians none of the country, none of the part of the country can elude itself by thinking that it, it can go on its own. It's not all. Nigeria has come to stay. Mr. President, we are mindful of your schedule and so we would like to thank you immensely for starting your day and week with us and good morning, Nigeria. Kingsley. <laughs> well, that's right. Uh, Claire, Mr. President, I also join my colleague Claire in thanking you for are coming on the program. Good morning, Nigeria. We do hope that you have a great week and oblige us with your time sometime in the future. Thank you. Now you know the moves made to frustrate the last election, including uh, threatening INEC by telling them that uh, their security cannot be guaranteed. And they asked for at least six weeks uh, extension of the time of the election. Mercifully, those six weeks are within uh, the time uh, for, for the election. And then reluctantly, the opposition conceded. And the rest, as they said, is history. So really, the Americans uh, have shown concern. Uh, they spoke to the former president, INAC, opposition and maintain the pressure throughout. This they are uh, in the same uh, agreement with, with Europe. Uh, and I think Nigerians tend to be grateful to United States and, and Europe 
for making sure that uh, uh, Nigerian election are conducted according to the law. Right, uh, Mr. President, thank you for your response. Still on the matter of security, uh, while in the U.S., you uh, responded to the question about the uh, Chibo girls, and you did say, of course, the intention of uh, the Nigerian government to ensure that the children are returned safe and alive. And uh, you talked about um, the reason, of course, for the relocation of uh, the command uh, control center. You know, how, uh, the UL, how is the U.S. willing to assist in this area? Yes. Well, as I said, uh, because of high technology the United States has, uh, and of course the, uh, the European countries uh, and China, um, and uh, lack of uh, capacity in that field, and lack of an effective air force, not that we don't have the trained personnel, Welcome to Good Morning Nigeria, Mr. President. Good morning. President, your official visit to the U.S. has generally been described as a huge, huge success. Now, in terms of commitments, what have we gained as a nation? And what commitments were you required to make? Um, the visit to the United States is significant in the sense that um, it's virtually the continuation of uh, my contact with uh, President Obama uh, when I was invited to G7 to brief them about the security in Nigeria, um, I was and still am very impressed with the concern the United States and Europe showed about the situation in Nigeria. And uh, if you can recall, we based our campaign, when I say we, I mean the APC, on three uh, basic issues in this country. Uh, Firstly, security. Firstly, security. Secondly, unemployment, especially of the youth, which means the economy. And sadly, corruption. Uh, these uh, three fundamental issues uh, is what uh, uh, I try to explain to G7. And on the invitation by President Obama, I went there, and this is what I discussed with the President of the United States, the Vice President, the, Vice the Secretary of State, and other organizations and NGOs in the United States. All right, Mr. President, you've already indicated the uh, areas in which you engaged American officials, but let's look at security, for instance. You did indicate that intelligence and capacity building were two of the issues in which you sought help from the Americans. Now, what specific comments, Mr. President, did the Americans make with regard to uh, these matters? And secondly, you have also touched on uh, the role of the G7. So that we don't have um, the basic infrastructure for its maintenance, but the problem is that um, uh, in spite of the money alleged to have been spent on um, the operations, uh, uh, the air force is, is virtually non-existent. Um, the fixed wing uh, aircrafts uh, are not very serviceable. The few that will remain, uh, the helicopters, again, uh, uh, are not serviceable and there are too few. And this is an operation virtually in an open country other than the Sambisa forest. So there is a need for Air Force uh, to conduct reconnaissance and support the ground troops. The arrangements made by the former government will soon expire. Uh, we have made this clear uh, to the Americans, we have made this clear to, to G7 and uh, we need their cooperation. Now this problem is not only the Northeast, we have a problem of the Gulf of Guinea, which you know it is between Senegal and Angola, and the incredible theft of Nigerian crude, uh, uh, of the average of more than 250,000 barrels a day, uh, which has been illegally uh, loaded from our terminals. Uh, by unpatriotic uh, Nigerians uh, that they only consider their own self-interest uh, uh, to, to get money. 
So we register uh, the support and cooperation of the United States and uh, other countries that sympathize with us uh, to make sure the Gulf of Guinea is secure. Uh, are the other international partners in the fight against Boko Haram still with us, uh, following, of course, from what you have discussed with the American officials? Well, if you can recall, there is a meeting of Lake Chad Basin Commission consisting of uh, uh, Cameroons, Chad, Nigeria, Niger, and uh, Benin Republic. Um, we decided to have a multinational joint task force. Uh, and then each country uh, to dedicate a number of troops to be placed uh, in different parts of uh, the Lake Child Basin Commission. And that should be done by the end of this month. Um, uh, there are logistic problems. Logistic problem. We discuss the logistic problems. We discuss the, problem. we discuss the problem of equipping the troops there. We discuss about intelligence gathering. We discuss about the uh, air support. Uh, and you, you all very well know that Nigeria is the main battleground. Uh, for that reason, Nigeria has to bear uh, the large cost of, of this operation. And um, I have a comprehensive uh, uh, report on what the Boko Haram was able to do when they occupied uh, uh, more than 10 local governments in Borno State, some local governments in Yobe and Adamawa State the destruction they made on the infrastructure, especially schools, hospitals, roads, blown up bridges, blown up markets. Uh, so we have uh, made uh, a list of this and what it will cost to quickly rehabilitate it. Again, the IDPs, internally displaced persons, there are more than 1.5 million spread over mostly uh, the rural three states of Borno, Yobe, Adama. But they are in Kaduna, they are here in Abuja. Uh, what it will take to rehabilitate them in terms of uh, repairing of the towns that have been raised down to the ground, like Baga, like Bama, and other, and other towns, and then getting the infrastructure, schools, hospitals, and then maybe getting the teachers that survived and equipping them. It's, it's, a, it's a very expensive and a long list, but uh, it's, 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 it's verifiable and quantifiable. One point that we also need to pursue has to do with equipment, to which we have also spoken. Nigeria, of course, faced some embarrassment some months ago uh, when the country tried to shop for arms and supermarkets, as it were, going to South Africa and our funds were withheld. I'm wondering, Mr. President, whether the Americans are now willing uh, to sell some critical equipment to us. The Americans are willing to help us. They understand our problem. They sympathize with us. This, I think, uh, you ought to know. Uh, from the time the Secretary of State was sent here before the election, he saw the former president, he saw chairman of INEC, he saw the then opposition. And America's stand was that they are not going to accept anything done in Nigeria outside the Constitution of Nigeria. And outside that means the Electoral Act.